This is going to be the whole Mosaic Law series that I did condensed into a single picture of understanding. In other words, a single symbol. And this should be powerful to let you know how much information we're really missing by not understanding the symbol. That that's the advantage that they have up on us, that all of this they've encoded in symbol, they're telling an incredible amount of information that most people are not getting. And so you're already limited by that fact. So if you consider them an, an adversary, in which they are, of course we have wickedness in high places. Well, these high places, some of them are the knowledge that they have over us. So this will allow you to see how this is taking place. And at the same time, it will give you the tools to come back and get some of this knowledge and know that Jesus Christ wants you to be fully knowledgeable about what's about to happen, not to be in fear. So the church, the institution has made you guys so deathly afraid of everything, false prophets, devils, demons, you know, damnation, hell, you know, the Pope, Obama. You guys are absolutely scared, crapless, and the church has done it to you. And you believe you're supposed to be in fear. You actually believe you're supposed to be in fear of God. And that's why you keep on pumping his wrath. Well, it's not it. God loves you. And that is not God's wrath. Plain and simple. I can say it. The spirit of truth is saying it. So this symbol will show you how that happened. So you have to watch the Mosaic Law series to understand exactly what you see here. If you watch that series in the fullness, you will understand this in the fullness. So what we have is the law, the dividing line. It's no accident. It's a lightning bolt. They say, you can't go over there. That's the dividing line. Well, what we have is thirsty people. We got people that are in need. And in this instance, they're in need of knowledge. Well, what the law is stopping them from going over to is another land, another land of, of understanding. Well, the problem is the land of understanding where the people are right now doesn't have much water. There's not much information. So over here on this land, there's a whole bunch of water. But the law says, you can't go over there. There's this monster in the water, and he made the water bad. So at one time, the water was actually calm, and there was a bunch of good fruits growing around this water. In instance, good spiritual fruits. But not now. They say the water's bad. You can't even go over there to pick the fruits that are near the water just because they say the monster's so terrible that it'll get you. You better be scared shitless. So don't go over there. Excuse my language. That just happened to come out like that. So we find out that the monster that's in the water that's stopping the people from coming over here and getting their thirst quenched really ain't in the water. He is in the mind. He has no power over the water to make it bad. But they've made you think that he does to keep you away from the water. Guess what? So that they could have it all. That's right. They could have it all. Have you ever wondered why they allow Jesus' words to still be in the Bible if they themselves have compiled the Bible in such a way where they control it? Guess what? They value his words. They value the living water also. Guess what? Everybody's got to value water. What did the Bible say? He's going to cause it to rain on the wicked. He's going to call it to rain on the righteous. Guess what? They value water because they also need it to live. They are trying to break the code out of his words. Every word from him is more precious to them than it is to most of you guys because they see into it. And they've taught you to only look on the surface. And then at the same time that you're looking on the surface, the only surface that you're seeing is the superficial, which is the material, which is keeping you away from the understanding of the goodness of the water, regardless of the beast they say that lives in it. So this beast now is Leviathan that inhabits the water. Guess what? Now he makes the water this abyss. Have you ever wondered why Leviathan is being compared to the water? He's trying to make his home in it. He's trying to make his home within this living understanding of the words of Jesus Christ so that he can crack the code to become a material being. So now we got Inky, which says he's the Lord of the flowing waters. Notice he's not the water, but he's trying to be the Lord of the flowing water. He's not the Lord of the flowing water. That's Jesus Christ. You get that?